On Saturday, September 13, 2003, the people of Texas narrowly approved Proposition 12, the final step of a battle for meaningful tort reform that lasted for decades. Organized medicine in Texas had triumphed again, perhaps its greatest triumph ever. But while we celebrated our victory, a much larger, stronger adversary was hard at work, forcing the hands of Texas lawmakers and regulators. And the plight of Texas family physicians and patients became more desperate than ever. Primary care physicians in the state of Texas are they're really struggling with made, making ends meet financially. The patients are, are in, in, a, in a tough spot uh, because of the economics of medicine right now. We're all taking it on the chin uh, for medicine in general. Access to care, or the lack of it, has become more critical in Texas today than ever before. A study conducted by the Texas Academy of Family Physicians and other primary care specialties documented that an alarming number of primary care physicians reported that they could no longer accept new Medicare and Medicaid patients. Family doctors continued their exodus from the most underserved areas of the state. Reimbursement rates continued to be driven lower by insurance companies and government regulators. Employers continued dropping insurance coverage leading to an enormous number of uninsured Texans. Many of us can't even pay our bills. Our patients continue to suffer, and who gets the blame? We do. Uh, you just kind of get beat down over time. And I think you see a lot of docs in Texas who are just kind of beat down, especially primary care docs, docs that are on the front line. The current system does not allow the physician and the patient to align uh, in the way it used to in, in, in decades past. The patients are the ones who are going to suffer. There, there's not going to be enough doctors to take care of them. There's sure not going to be doctors going into primary care. And while family physicians struggle to make ends meet, the insurance companies are getting richer and richer and paying their top executives obscenely high salaries, while their customers, our patients, have to fight to get their medical bills paid. There's something terribly wrong with this picture and we all know it. What are you going to do? Dig in and continue taking their relentless bombardment? Run for shelter and watch helplessly as your patients suffer? Continue quietly accepting the fact that your practice and your profession may just be disappearing before your very eyes. There is only one way to make a difference and that is to rise up once again through the Texas Academy of Family Physicians and TAFPAC, its Political Action Committee, and fight back. I think if we do not stand together and make our case presented, we are going to continue to be taken basically what I consider advantage of. Although we've allowed this to happen to ourselves, I believe, individually by not standing up and being a patient advocate in these rifts have come between us, we have shown that collectively we can make a difference, but only collectively. We got united when it came to uh, tort reform. It was easy for all of us, because it was all of our problems. We were all sick and tired of being harassed unnecessarily through the tort system, uh, through a system that was sick and broken. We have a health care system right now and a payment system for sure that's sick and broken, and we have got to fix that. More than any other specialty, more than ever before, more than you ever imagined possible. You need to join this battle now. To advocate for our patients now. To influence the key lawmakers and decision makers now. To take charge of our own destiny now. Joining TAFP and enlisting in TAFPAC is the first step. It is time to come out of our offices, give, give of our time, give of our money, so collectively we can stand up for our patients, stand up for ourselves, and improve that doctor-patient relationship. If it means um, from financially making a contribution to your organization that represents you well, awesome. That should be possibly the first thing you should be doing. Second thing, joining groups so that you can be able to have your ventilation episodes there, but also learning more about the process. And third, but not least, is becoming active with your community. Most of us are in this because we're, we're about taking care of people and making a difference in folks' lives. And you can make a difference by participating in TAFPAC 
and by educating our legislators and allowing us to take care of people the way they ought to be taken care of. We did it before and we can do it again. It began in the 1980s when Texas physicians working together took the lead and ended the trial lawyer's decades-long stranglehold on our judicial system. We stood shoulder to shoulder with our patients and spoke out again, and the Texas legislature passed the toughest patient protection laws in the nation. We rose as one and brought big tobacco down. We successfully sued the HMO industry for racketeering and in 2003 put an end to frivolous lawsuits against doctors. Texas family physicians have faced enormous odds in the past, and we've overcome them. Today, the odds are once again stacked against us, our patients, and our profession. What comes next is up to us. We did it before, and we will do it again. We did it before, and we can do it again. We never has lost a war from days of We did it before, we'll do it again. We must do it again.